This video is sponsored by Real Vision. On this show, we've talked a lot about trade wars, monetary policy, and their effect on markets, especially the bond markets. If you've been paying attention to the financial news, then of course you've been bombarded by bond market coverage. You might have seen that our boy Stan Druckenmiller said in an interview with the Economic Club of New York that he went from 93% invested to net flat and bought a bunch of treasuries after reading one of Trump's infamous trade war tweets. Well, he isn't alone in that opinion. Today we're going to explain why everybody is talking about treasuries. And it's all going down on this week's episode of Real Vision's The One Thing. What's going on investors, AK here. So Drug bought treasuries for protection. In his own words, he's not trying to make money, he's just not trying to play the game. Buying treasuries for their safety seems to be a fear-driven action. But the emotions of fear and greed are curious partners in crime. And some traders are looking at treasury through a greedier prism. Raul Paul, the CEO of Real Vision, recently wrote a report for the Macro Insiders called Buy Bonds, Buy Dollars, Wear Diamonds, where he adds conviction to his bond position. Raul Paul explained that guys like Druckenmiller and Soros make a majority of their wealth during the down part of a business cycle. That's when people don't want to own bonds, but they need to own bonds. Dr. Kamal Shrikumar sat down with Real Vision and expressed similar thoughts. He argued that slowing growth in the trade wars would push the market into U.S. Treasuries, which would bring yields down. He discussed the relationship between bond yields and bond prices and talked about where he thinks Treasuries will go. Namely, trade wars are going to be good for U.S. Treasuries, and then your low inflation is going to be very good for it as well and the expectation of low economic growth is also a positive. Think about what a nominal bond yield is. It is a summation of your expectations on inflation and what you think is going to happen to growth. If real growth is going to be very high, you will be prepared to pay a very high interest rate and I will demand a high interest rate to lend to you and that is not only with respect to the private sector individuals, but with the U.S. Treasury as well. And I took the position that despite the Trump ta tax cuts around Christmas of 2017, you, yes, you will have a few quarters of uh, growth pickup, but that's a sugar high. Just because you have a sugar high and your energy level goes up, that doesn't mean you have become an individual with permanently high energy for the rest of your life. Similarly here, I thought it would happen for two or three quarters and then fall off. Sure enough, that seems to be happening right now. So the sugar high is wearing off. And if you look at the chart of the US 10-year treasuries, Kumar has been spot on. Normally coming off a tax break would push treasury prices lower and yields higher because of increasing fiscal deficits, tightening monetary policies, and worries about global growth. Despite that, as a wise man once said, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And in the context of the rest of the world's weakness compared to the US, a 2% return looks pretty good. I mean, in Germany, you actually have to pay the government to hold a German bond. That's why US treasuries are still king despite an increase in supply and deteriorating economic conditions. Dr. Kamara discussed this further. Yes, the US fiscal deficit has increased and that is not a good thing and therefore they have to issue more treasuries but look what the market is saying despite that the yield is going down and the reason for that is that there is an immense amount of global demand that is coming from different sources even the threat that the Chinese may sell some of the treasuries as a retaliatory measure in the trade war has not caused the yields to go up so the private German, the private French person, and the private Asian investor is going to say, I'm going to seek refuge in U.S. Treasuries. So it basically it looks like a bulletproof situation for U.S. Treasuries right now. Despite a supply increase, there's still safety in U.S. Treasuries compared to the rest of the world. Mark Newton came on Real Vision last week to give a trade idea with a less binary view on bonds. Experienced traders like Newton can sometimes spot the bottom or even catch a falling knife on its way down. Newton broke down his forecast for U.S. Treasuries. It's really right near 2% is going to be very key, not only psychologically, but also it lines up with a few other technical factors. So I, I would really be a... Uh, you know, a seller of treasuries into that 2.01 to 2.06 yield area, thinking that yields stop there and turn back higher. If we get under 2%, then, you know, you would, you, you would obviously uh, stop that out. How high do you see yields going? Well, I think probably uh, initially we could move up, you know, at least 20 or 30 basis points from there. It's, it's, not a, it's not a big move. A lot needs to be done. We need to get up over 240 to have conviction that yields can start to trend higher. So for me right now, it's about trying to really buy a, 
you know, a dip in yield, or in this case, sell treasuries as yields get that low. Mm -hmm. uh, over 240, you could make a more meaningful case for, for a larger uh, yield rally. That would be a breakout of the entire downtrend, very similar to what you know I was speaking of in the S and P, getting up over 2,800 structurally would be important. And would this be in the same September timeframe? I do believe that's possible, just because they've trended very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so if we can start to see yields uh, make a stand, right now I have a little bit more conviction that equities are closer than than Treasury yields, but it's unlikely that we're going to see one take off and, and see the other just sit there, just given the degree that they have all moved lower together. So first off, those were all trade ideas, not investment advice. So take it all with a grain of salt. The true value in those clips is seeing how professionals build their trading and investing process to reach their own conclusions. They should give you an idea about how the market at large is thinking about treasuries and how the pros are positioning themselves to profit. So when legends like Druck join the party and they agree with pros like Pal, Kumar, and Newton, then it's time to pay attention, whether you agree with their thesis or not. If you want help building and refining your process so you could identify profit opportunities like this, then make sure you subscribe to Real Vision. I'll talk to you next week.